Listen, I think John Gruden wants to marry Antonio Brown. I want to marry what? Antonio Brown, man. <laughs> He's a Gruden grinder, though. You know that. Hey, guys, follow, you can follow the podcast as well. We're on every, every audio uh, streaming outlet, such as Apple, Spotify, and other things as well. So come through, hit that Where like and subscribe as well, podcast, baby. baby. Yes, sir. J. Bobby and Rios. And let's get it. It's Hard Knocks, baby. And our Hard Knocks segment is called Just When Maybe. That is a segment we do every week on Hard Knocks. Yes, I know we're two, three episodes in, and we're on the third episode now, but it's cool. Let's just recap you a little bit. If you don't know anything, A.B., doesn't like his helmet. And this is an ongoing thing with AB and his situation. And AB, this is an episode of Ballers. If you've seen Ballers, that's what it's like. It is stupid at this point. He doesn't want to wear his helmet. He doesn't like his helmet. He wants his old helmet. And now he's not getting his, his helmet back. So I don't know what he wants me to do because I'm watching the Raiders because I want to see you there. And you finally came back and you made it a good episode, bro. Also, if you don't know, another recap, Mark Davis is the owner of the Raiders. Mark Davis looks like fried bologna. So I just that's another thing you need to know. Um, what else do we need to know about Hard Knocks? Also, we too, have? they're showing the Raiders, uh, the Raiders outlook because they're moving to Vegas after next year. And also, too, the TV boys. Shout out Mike Mayock and, and John Gruden because, you know, they got to they gotta ride the ship out. So it's interesting to see how they, how they you know, work together i want to marry ab man <laughs> yo he yo i think he has a bromance with ab he really really likes ab i like ab too but i don't think i like him that much but hey. then again if you're gonna help me win games i'm gonna like you that much too and i mean plus hey listen they gave john gruden 100 million dollars so he has to, he better love ab yeah gotta love it also what all right so let's talk about episode three what is the things that you liked about episode three shout out my guy hunter renfro yes, man. yes because yes, yo yes, listen yes. They've doubted you pretty much your whole career. You know, you had to, at Clemson, you were killing. Mm -hmm. And even now in the NFL, you know, he was a low round pick as well, which was kind of, I felt was a disservice to him because of the things he did at Clemson, which, you know, he pretty much kind of destroyed the Alabama dynasty in a sense. <laughs> and, you know, he's on the Raiders now and he's, he might be the best slot receiver that they have for yeah, them. Shout out Hunter Renfro with the Tom Brady body. <laughs> so John Gruden said like, yo, we're going to get bigger, faster and more conditioned. And then he showed a picture of Hunter Renfro. And Hunter Renfro has a Tom Brady body. If you don't know what a Tom Brady body is, just Google Tom Brady draft pick body. And you're gonna see that Hunter Renfro has a Tom Brady body. Shout out to Hunter Renfro, you're cooking. Also, what was amazing was the John Gruden impression. I mean, that was amazing. That is top five, one of the best things I've ever seen because that was just spot on. Frey Caliendo doesn't miss, man. Yeah, he does not miss at oh, all. Oh, nah, keep that same <laughs> energy, <laughs> dog. Keep that energy. Miss. Because when I, we were talking about Frank Conley and Endo in the pre-production meeting, you, you didn't have that same type of energy saying he was amazing. Say what you said. He is kind of annoying a little bit, but I do like his Gruden impersonation. Oh, okay. I do. I do. This I do. guy loves to double back on things. Do. He don't keep that same do. energy, dog. We listen. need the same energy meter or something. <laughs> nah, hey, listen, because it kind of grew on me again, you know? I thought because Gruden grinders. I'm, I'm, I'm a Gruden grinder. Are you a Gruden grinder? <laughs> you don't you don't work hard. You don't you don't work hard. I work hard, but I'm not a Gruden grinder. I, I just want I love listen. I want Gruden grind. I want Gruden to get fired low key so I can see him back on TV Monday nights. And I want him to do something with Tony Romo. Him and Tony Romo in the booth would be amazing. Just like I said last time, I want Tony Romo to do my gender review. I want him to guess the sex of my child. That would be amazing. Shout out Tony Romo. But Tony Romo and Gruden, Gruden has been amazing in this. This has been the highlight of the show, Gruden. And now that we got AB back. That has been amazing too. Um, men lie, women lie, analytics dope. That's what something that AB says. Shout out AB. <laughs> Yo, also, Jonathan Abram talking about Madden ratings. That guy, that was a highlight of the show as well. Man, why y'all got my ratings so low? Why y'all playing like that? You're young, man. What that supposed to mean? You gotta show up on film. <laughs> we haven't seen him. All, you got all of us like, sorry. Sorry. Eric Harry, Carl Joseph, our rating way too low. He's the most in need of an upgrade. Here Carl Joseph. Oh, really? Number, number the market joiner should be at least 90 plus. Right. AB should be 100. Derek Carr is like 82. What do you think he should be? Like 90. Derek Carr at 90? What? No, 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 no. Derek Carr's at 82. He's at 82. He's at 82. I'm sorry. He's at 82, but he recommended that Derek Carr should be at 90, which is kind of ludicrous. Hey, man. 82 it's is kind of crazy. Kind of rough. He should be an 85. I'll give him an 85. An 85? Yeah, he had bad. Cam Newton's an 85. Cam Newton should be in the 90s. That's a fact. No, not really. Anyway. No. 
moving along. <laughs> money talk. Cha Let's talk about that money. This is the segment where we talk about money. I'm either yelling about somebody that needs to get paid or somebody that got the, that got paid. And in this case, somebody got paid and somebody needs to get paid. And that is Ezekiel Elliott that needs to get paid and Jalen Smith got paid. Now here's the thing. We talked about Zeke on the last episode. Uh, uh, Jerry Jones was talking about. Zeke who? Zeke who? Zeke who? Zeke who? My mind skipped a little bit. Hey, just, just go along with the process. <laughs> He's talking about Zeke who? And I thought it was funny. I thought it was hilarious. But obviously, Ezekiel Elliott didn't think it was funny. Him and his agent came out and said, yo, we didn't think it was funny. So you know what that means. Zeke was basically saying, run me my money, you old man. <laughs> hey, listen. And now that Jalen Smith getting paid, which is honestly justifiable because listen, think, let's look at his career landscape. You know, he had the injury at Notre Dame, mm -hmm. which they said was career threatening. Yeah. And the fact that he was able to bounce back and become one of the best pass rushers in the league yeah. and him to get that payday is well deserved. So shout out to you, Jalen Smith, you deserve it. But yo, what the Zeke thing? I'm, let's go back to the Zeke thing. Okay, okay. What is Jerry Jones doing, man? I'm honestly like, this is a mind game that is just gonna keep going on until he gets paid. Because Zeke will get his money. Mm -hmm. I believe he will get his money, but it's just a matter of how much will he get, how much guaranteed money he will get. But also too, you know, Zeke does have some character issues that need to be resolved. So I think Jerry Jones is kind of playing coy with that a little bit. Yeah. No, that's but, my, that's my thing. but I also think like this, I, I feel like somebody that wants to get paid and deserves to get paid, they don't want to go to camp because camp is very draining on your body and your mind. So it's just like, all right, you're not paying me what I deserve and what I'm worth. Why am I going to camp and sweat and bust my ass? So I'm not going to show up to camp. I might show up to game one because I, I, I want to play. Or it can turn into a Le'Veon Bell situation where you just sit out the whole year and the team doesn't have you. Yeah, James Conner uh, stepped up for the Steelers last year, but he still wasn't Le'Veon right. Bell. So you have Tony Pollard who they're putting a lot of stock in, but he's still not Ezekiel Elliott. So it could be the same thing. And and I mean, like, Zeke can take a hit for a year and he probably will get a lot of more money. Well, he probably will get more money somewhere else because let's say Le'Veon has a good year. Now you see that Le'Veon had a good year and he had a year of rest. You might think the same thing with Ezekiel Elliott where he has a year of rest and you want to give him the money and you know he's young. He has a, listen, like I said, I know I'm going along, I'm cutting you off. I want to give you some time too, but I just want to say this. Running backs should have shorter deals. They should get paid high. They take a lot of punishment. They take the money most punishment they should just have shorter deals so if you don't do that and you don't please your running back then running back shouldn't please you I'm, that's all that's what i'm saying and like as i'm as i'm gonna reiterate jerry jones listen man zeke is the straw that stirs the damn drink give him the goddamn money please whip it through the glass that's it well i don't care i'm a giants fan so you know zeke you can sit out the whole year bro go to cabo chill out you know what i'm saying go to edm concerts and party it up you know, he already got the nose ring already, so I, I, he's already halfway like, invested like into his life. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, that's what it is, though. <laughs> Listen, next, 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 next. This is Slender Hours. This is where we slander things. You know, I like, I love Slender Hours because you know Jay, Bobby, and Rios, we love the slander things. Yes, sir, that's and that's another true. person that's, that's out here slandering things is they're actually a tag team duo. Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham, the Cleveland Browns, they're out here slandering things, baby. All right, first of all, why are the Cleveland Browns even slandering things? I mean, they haven't won anything in like 25 years. True. So like, honestly. Wait, 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 wait. Let's hear people. What's going on here? You okay, know, okay. get a little ahead of yourself. I know you're a Giants fan and I know you're tight. But listen, Baker did an article with GQ and he came out and he basically said he didn't understand how the Giants have the, what, the fifth pick? Six pick. The six pick, and they drafted Daniel Jones. He just didn't understand that, and he was shocked. Now, he also came out on his Instagram and said, I didn't say those things. I was just saying that I hope I heard good things about Daniel Jones. Shout out to him. He was just surprised that the Giants actually did draft Daniel Jones. All I'm going to say is Baker Mayfield, stop the capping, bro. Stop the capping. How's he capping? Listen. I think he's being, I, per, I per, this is my this is my theory. You know what I'm saying? I got so many uh, theories and agendas popping off in my brain. Mm. I think Baker is Odell Beckham's mouthpiece. But ba no, no, yeah. Odell's talking shit too. Hey, listen, no, but I how's just- How's his no, mouthpiece? I, I just think they, listen. they're both in each other's ear. 
And honestly, for, for what? They haven't proved anything. But to be fair, Baker has thrown shots at the Giants previous to this. So whether he backtracked on this or not, he has thrown shots at the Giants. And for somebody, I'm riding on the Giants all year. So when I see Baker throw shots at uh, the Giants organization, you know how I feel. Remember in Step Brothers? What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. Did we just become best friends? That's yep. how I feel about Baker Mayfield. Cause when you're slandering the Giants, that's how I feel. We need to slander the Giants all year long. Kind of makes me, kind of makes me think Baker Mayfield wants to be a Giant. That's you neither here nor there. Anyway, um, <laughs> Odell has been slant. He's what did Odell say? Odell pretty much said that. Hey, listen. They they got they had me when they had me and now it's gone it's over it's pretty much over. That's not what they said. That's not what he. That's said. what he pretty much said. Odell said, said, "Yo, they sent me here to die." <laughs> That's what he said. He thought they they sent me here to die. And now here's my thing about the Giants organization. They got rid of Odell because they said he's a distraction. A distraction. But the funny thing is you got rid of him and you still got to deal with Odell. So now he's more a distraction being off the team than he is the team. You could have had Odell and he could have been a little bit of a distraction in your organization. Now he's on another team and he's doing well and he's more of a distraction to you and you don't have wide receivers. So shout out to y'all. Congratulations. Well, you played yourself. Well, how is he doing well? They haven't played a game yet. That's number one. And number two... It's gonna be great when Odell is angry that he has to, you know, hang out at Applebee's at 12 o'clock in the morning in Cleveland. I mean, the river does catch on fire in Cleveland, though. So Listen, there you man. go. J.R. Smith going to have Cleveland. Fun. Have, was fun. The best have fun. Have fun. Have fun, Odell. Have fun. Have fun, Odell. You know what I'm saying? Eat your jalapeno poppers and your, you know, Listen, your bonus chicken wings and stuff. Listen, I'm trying to not curse the family show. Go ahead. But f the Giants. That's what's gonna do it. Yeah, I said to myself, you dig. <laughs> anyway, Twitter streets. See, we give you segment after segment, so you wanna wanna come back to the show so you can see these segments. Twitter Street is a segment that we do when we talk about Twitter and what's going on on Twitter and what's popping and what's trending in Twitter because we're on Twitter and we are in these Twitter streets, my brother. Yes, sir. And what is going on in these Twitter streets, my brother? These chicken sandwich wars. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't know, Popeyes dropped the chicken sandwich and honestly, it's applying pressure. We, we talk about applying that pressure. Mm -hmm. So, hey. People hey. in the streets were saying Chick-fil-A had the best chicken sandwich out. Hey, hey, And then Popeyes hey. had to come through with that, with that, Muhammad Ali Haymaker, and then you know, which which honestly came back with the clapbacks from other fast food companies such as Wendy's and what's the other place that we didn't even know about? Who cares? Uh, hold on real quick. Listen, the lines are long at Popeyes, the chickens are sold out, but listen, my man Rios, we got them for the low, my brother. The Popeye chicken, so whatever you need, we got them on deck. We reselling them things. Mmm. Ooh. Ooh, how that taste, my brother? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, as a community though, we didn't learn anything because we seen Big Mama die on the uh, Summer Jam screen. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about, I'm talking about soul food and Big Mama died. But now we're just eating this and it's crazy, man. But uh, it was a lot of amazing memes for this. One of my favorite memes is when Plunkett, that's what it is, it's called Plunkett? Plunkers. Plunkett came out and said, what about, I don't care what their name is. <laughs> their chicken is trash anyway. But they came out and they said, oh, what, we like our chicken with beer. And then this was the greatest meme response ever. Who in the blue hell are you? Amazing. Who are you? And even Bojangles, they made Bojangles delete their dry ass chicken. So shout out to the Twitter streets coming at these organizations because if it ain't Chick-fil-A, it ain't popping, you're not hot in these streets. Mind your wait, business. Wait, wait, what? If it ain't Chick-fil-A or Popeyes, mind your business. Remember that Cam Newton meme? Go, go. Man, go get you one of these, man. That's all I got to say. You do, you don't even don't even ask how much money I spent on these on these Popeyes chicken sandwiches, bro. It's bad. It, it's bad. Also, I'm going out like Big Mama, man. <laughs> so I'm going out. Oh, yeah. One last point before we get out of here. We're going to have Rios eat Chick-fil-A sandwich, not Chick-fil-A, Popeye sandwiches three times a day for a month. So it's gonna be Super Side Me 2 featuring Rios. I'm already halfway in. He's gonna look like Steve Francis when this is done, but. Steve Francis? <laughs> God bless. Oh, oh, let's talk about championship tours. Oh, what do they call the championship tours after you win? Yeah. That's what it's called? It's called, it's called a tour, yeah, okay. all right. And my man Kawhi is having a tour. It might be the worst one ever. It honestly might be the worst one ever. Let's be real here. And this is why it's the worst one. My producer David has a little wager with me to open this up and just start it off by saying, what it be, baby? What it do, baby? <laughs> what? 
Come, come on, son. What it be? What it be? Like, I, oh, oh, oh my God. Kawhi, I feel you, dog. I really do, bro. Like, I know you just want to chill, you know, watch sports and, you know, chill with your kids and stuff like that. But Jesus Christ, man, stop, stop, just stop. Like, leave, leave that man alone. Like, I don't think he just wants, to, I don't think he wants to do this anymore, you know? I just think he wants to chill out, you know, do, it, do the things he wants to do, not go on this finals tour. This is ridiculous. This is honestly just utterly ridiculous. Do you, wh wh what do you think about this, man? Wow. Wow. Anyway, wow. listen, I, I'm just gonna say this. She sounds like an undercover cop. Can I have one marijuana, please? <laughs> <laughs> listen, man, just stop, just stop, man. Oh my God. Anyway, listen, man, let's talk about something that I like. Let's talk about 2K. So the 2K trailer popped off and it got a lot of criticism and a lot of feedback. Now it has the likes of celebrities such as Idris Elba, Rosario Dawson, Dita Samaro, LeBron James in it, such as the Clutch Boys. We call let's, let's call them Clutch Mafia, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Rich Paul's not, Rich, Rich Paul should be in the game, but that should be a whole different story for a whole different day. But no, they have Maverick Carter and LeBron James. How do you feel about the trailer, you know? Listen, I like some of the Idris Elba movies. But what the fuck does he know about basketball? <laughs> and also too, yo, it's gonna be funny when like, they, I wish they know, Idris Elba should be in the game. Okay. I, he, they they should have had like his Stringer Bell character in The Wire, you know what I'm saying? Like imagine like, you your 2K player sits in the front of the car, he has a, you have a bad game and then you know, you see you see Idris Elba in the back of the car doing you know, the, the whole, <laughs> the whole, you know, that that motion. Listen, man. It's, also, it's crazy, though. Rosario Dawson, Dawson's in there. Um, Yo, you, she, think, you think Cory Book is in there? <laughs> hey, Cory Book is in there pandering for votes. <laughs> Yo, remember he was like, Yo. Mr. Vice right, President, there's a saying in my community, you're dipping into Kool-Aid and you don't even know the flavor. <laughs> yeah, when he did that shit, that shit got me hot. I said, I'm not voting for you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, hey, listen. <laughs> Rosario Dawson can say whatever she wants to me, and I and I'll and I'll and I'll do whatever. You gotta relax. This is a family show. She she, she <laughs> well, can shout out to you. <laughs> she can say the alphabet backwards. Puerto Rican. And, and I'll and I'll like pop said, on her. Denzel was like, "What are you Dominican? What are y'all like Dominican? Something like that?" No, Boniqua, baby. Thank you. Boniqua, yeah, whatever. He said, "I'm Boniqua, baby." <laughs> shout out, he got game. That's a classic. No. <laughs> but anyway, moving along. Oh, man, Rosario I gotta Dawson. stop saying moving along, but I can't. Rosario, Rosario Dawson just distracted me. I'm sorry. Hey. Well, the NBA rookie poll dropped up, popped off, and honestly, it was very intriguing. Mm. Now, they had Cam Reddish as the best pro. He's gonna have the, the pro with the best career, mm. not your boy Zion, mm. hate to see it. Mm. And they said, well, I'm gonna do, let's do the percentages real quick. They, it was 30, no, 22% said that Cam Reddish was gonna be the best player, and the best career, and then they, Zion was at a whopping 5%. Now, do you have any issue with that? Uh, I have a lot of issues with that because I think Zion, if you were to say he's going to be the rookie of the year, you say he's the most athletic, which we know he's the most athletic. Obviously. All right, we're talking about Zion's ceiling. If Zion reaches his ceiling, his full potential, he will have the best career out of any of those athletes, right? And I like Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish is dope. I feel like when he was at Duke, that did not do him justice. I feel like they didn't know how to fit him out. They didn't know how to use him. And that happens sometimes in college basketball because college basketball is straight system basketball. In the NBA, it's more free flowing. It's, it's made for people like him. Shoot, and he can shoot that thing and he's gonna be useful. Now, do I think he's gonna be better than Zion? No, because they doubted Zion in high school. First they said Zion didn't play with anybody, right? Then he came into Duke and they was like, RJ's the guy. RJ's godfather is Steve Nash. RJ's dad is the president of Canada operations in basketball. And I was like, that's cool. And he, they said RJ had all the fundamentals and all this blah, 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 blah. But who was the national player of the year in college basketball? Basketball. Zion. Zion. And Zion showed that he was on another level than any of those boys out there. Cam Reddish, I love you, dog. But will you be the best? Absolutely not. Zion's that guy. Now, I'm, here's why I'm going to tell you you're wrong. Now, I'm never here's wrong. The, sometimes. Here's the thing with Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish fits the typical NBA proto. He has the typical NBA prototype body. He's 6'8". He has a long wingspan. He can shoot the ball, mm -hmm. you know, and he's and he's pretty much a decent guy going to the rim. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the team that he's on with the Hawks, you know, they have Trey Young, John Collins, Kevin Huter, and all those guys. I feel as if he will thrive in that role with them. You know, he'll be a spot-up shooter, you know, a nice three and D guy. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is that those players tend to last longer in the league now due to the fact that the league is shifting into a whole emphasis on the three-point line. So the fact of the matter is that he can shoot the ball that he'll last longer. All right, excuse so me. It's so it's so, All you know. They said better career. I don't right. think he will have a better career than Zion. I think he'll be a multiple, I think he'll be a multi, a multi-year all-star, I believe that. Because I do. I honestly do. So you think you have more all-stars than Zion? I, it's possible. Listen, my the thing with Zion too as well. Listen, we don't know Zion has weight issues. You know, we seen him. We seen him at that. We you know we seen him at that at that uh at that summer but, league but, thing. You know no, what I'm saying? But that, they, he was traveling at that time. And he was, and people know and the Pelicans knew that he was traveling at that time. He was doing a lot of meetings. He didn't have time to work out. He was place to place doing a lot of media yeah, stuff, so right. now he's getting back in his shape when he was at that's why they shut him down for summer league they wanted him to get back to his full form all right cool he can get down to weight that's not a problem it's not like it's tough man he's in new orleans bro you know the, the beignets the gumbo you know what i'm saying the, the, the crawfish yeah the fried chicken everything bro yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's gonna be tough kendrick perkins wasn't lying about that man Look at Kendrick Perkins now, bro. He, where's, where, what was the last time he played for? Bro, you talking about Kendrick Perkins and Zion? That's it's two you different. You can't things. compare those players. Hey, listen, they both, they, they both, they both fat. Yeah, I'm they're both fat. They both Yo, fat. Yo, but I gotta talk about my guy, Taco. Taco, what, what's going on with Taco? Well, Vegas has uh, the, the odds for Vegas. It says that Taco has a better chance of winning Rookie of the Year than Zion. Hey man, I'm rolling with that shit. <laughs> yeah, I got my money on Taco. Taco, my guy. Yo, I've been riding with you. Yo, listen, my money. How much you put it on Taco? Two dollars. Two. What? I'm pulling down five thousand on Taco, man. My rookie. If you let me down, then I, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> John Morant will win Rookie of the Year. What are you? Yo, bro. Put no, we're riding with Taco. We're a team. John Morant will win Rookie. This time my guy. Yo, overtime, fire him. <laughs> anyway, bro. Hey, bro. What, what Daryl Morey? That's how you pronounce the name? Daryl Morey, yes, correct. Yeah, sometimes I can't pronounce names, but Daryl Morey. Hey, just, just look. Someone asked me who's a better scorer, him or Michael Jordan, and and it's just factual that James Harden is a better scorer than Michael Jordan. Based now. on the math. Based on literally, like you give him, you give James Harden the ball, and before you're giving up the ball, how many points do you generate? Which is how you should measure offense. Hey, bro. Hey, you the analyst guy, you the numbers guy. Break it down to me. Pretty much what Daryl Morey said is that Harden is a better scorer than Jordan. Now he didn't say player. That's where people got the whole, you know, the, the outrage about that, but no. What, what Daryl Morey said was that Harden accounts for more points for his team than Jordan does. Okay. Which in a sense is true because of the assist numbers that Harden averages and mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is that he's able to, you know, impact the game in, in, the, in, that, in, that, in that realm. But in terms of overall player, I don't think that's a thing. Well, I I, I, but he thing. didn't say that though. But I know like, what I'm saying. People, but people really, people took it to that level because people can't comprehend right. nothing. Like that's my thing about this. Like I feel like we shouldn't look too deep into it because what he said is a fact. But my thing is like this: Harden could be a better scorer than Jordan. Cool. But what we really care about at the end of the day is the rings. And with Jordan, Jordan's whole mystique or the thing about him, he won three back to back. And then he retired and then came back and won another three back to back. He literally dominated the league at that time. So if you can't do the same thing that Jordan did and dominate and be the greatest player on the planet in your era and do those type of things, like for me, I think LeBron's the best best basketball player ever touch a basketball. But at the end of the day, it won't matter because he never dominated the way Jordan dominated. Now I feel the competition is way better. You have better athletes. It's a different era. But I'm just talking about the domination that Jordan put on the league. That's why none of this matters and I feel like people shouldn't overreact to this but you know people are crazy people are scared right. people want to take that the wrong way and that's just what is what it is hey listen and also too Maury's gonna stick by his guy people people really don't understand that so that's that's a, that's one thing you got to consider and also too I mean hey listen if you were to take Harden off the Rockets mm -hmm. I I don't think they'll be their playoff team you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying even if with Westbrook let's yeah. be real here Harden really is that the highest impact guy in the league so in, in turn, yeah, he is, because he accounts for most of the points that the Rockets accumulate. So, but that, that, has he done that when that matters? At the end of the day, listen, what's what's a game you think about when you think about Harden? Has he done that when that matters? 
I don't blame him for missing 26. For, I don't blame him for missing 26 three pointers straight. I, I can't. I can't do. I like Harden a lot, it. but until he does do something it. when when it matters, then this conversation is listen, invalid. Listen, he's taken his team to two Western Conference Finals. They played against honestly the greatest team to ever. They did. They did. The greatest team to they ever did. play. Did. So honestly, what what are we gonna do? We gotta take that with a grain of salt as well. No, you gotta be. <laughs> it's tough though. It's tough. Listen, when he's when Trevor Reza and Luke Richard Abba Mute and, and and um Gerald Green are missing three pointers, what are you gonna do? You can't do nothing about that. You can't. You can't. Harden, I'm riding with you, dog. You know what I'm saying? You you'll be all right. You're better than Kobe Bryant anyways. That, that, that's all <laughs> So that's hey, that. Man. Let's go. This, this is my Speak, topic right here. Speaking of speaking of uh mediocre players, uh watch your mouth. Oh, what? What? What happened? What I watch, say? Watch your mouth, woman. <laughs> wait, 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 what? What I do? Watch what your I, mouth, woman. What I say? What, what was the issue? What, what was Ad address my guy properly. Oh, my fault. Hello to God. So Royce White, Royce White had, you know, had some things to say about Carmelo Anthony, and here it is. Melo is absolutely being blackballed. He's one of the realest in it. He's one of those dudes that, you know, he ain't like me. He don't talk like brash and, and straightforward like that, but he has those morals and principles, you know? Um, and he, he's given too much to the game for them not to allow him to play or for them to, you know, kind of culturally just make a, make a decision or an agreement that he's not good enough anymore. I think what Royce Rogers said is facts. I feel like they're black, and mellow. And I feel like it's weird because this is not the Kaepernick situation, oh but it feels God. like the Kaepernick situation what? because no, but it's because why is every team black, bold, and mellow? Uh, uh, cause it's simple. He can't play defense. He's not a good catch and shoot player. So like, why is he? Yo, this is why I this always is enough. expose this is enough. Rios. This is because I will enough. not let him fraud for the cameras. Rios literally said, yo, yo, we need, we need a uh, small forward. And Mello would be perfect for the Nets. So why would you, why do you say that now? And then say no team should sign Mello. I just want one. No team should sign Mello? This, like, cause your argument is always, oh, Mello doesn't play defense. Defense. All right, cool. There's a lot of people in the NBA that don't play defense. There's a lot of people in the NBA that aren't even good and they're in that league. So why is it Melo in the league? I'm not understanding. Hey, listen. This. listen, I know Melo, he could be a quote unquote cancer and he, he doesn't play I don't defense. Think, I don't think that's true. I don't think he's a cancer. I, I, I think that's I exactly, that's my cancer. point. So even if you don't want to play Melo, you just want him on the pony and play like five, 10 minutes a game. He deserves to be in the league. He can totally coach them young boys and give them advice. Melo deserves a farewell tour. Melo deserves to be in the league. And I don't understand why people are giving Melo such a hard time. I feel like a lot of this is created from the internet and we just ran with it and Melo is getting this bad PR rap. And this is this is really terrible. This is terrible for the league. Hey, listen. Melo is that guy. Hey, I feel listen. like Melo, Melo is NBA royalty. And I feel like he should be treated as such. I mean, Melo is like the 51st greatest player of all time, but However, but that doesn't mean he's not NBA royalty. He is, he's a Hall of Famer. But however, Joe Ingles took the talent out that boy. Let's be real here. That's a lot. That's, hey, that's, Joe that's Ingles took the talent out of Paul George and Paul George is still in the league. Paul George honestly was third in MVP voting, so that's not true. But anyway, here's, the, here's my thing with Carmelo Anthony. The fact of the matter is this. Carmelo Anthony, it's a, just a little too late for him. You know, he didn't want to come off the bench in OKC when he should have came off the bench in OKC. And now he's realizing, oh shit. But that's not I'm my needed. point. No, it, no, it, it has everything to do with it. Man, it's called, no. You telling me you he have can't to be on one team? I don't know. No, no, could you, no, could you say to me that, did, no, didn't you say this verbatim? Yo, Melo would be good for the Nets. Yeah. But then I realized, Fraud. but then I realized, but then I realized this, you Fraud. know, but then I realized this, you know, it'll be a zombie KD situation, but then I realized, wait, Kevin Durant actually does play defense and Melo doesn't, so it kind of wouldn't work out. So, so that's that on that. So my mind changed quickly off that. However, however, Melo, just give it up, bro. Ice Cube's gonna call your phone like within the next like year or two. So, you know, the big three, he'll play with the triplets, him and Joe. Oh, he wouldn't even be the best player in the big three, honestly, cause you know, the real number seven is Joe Johnson, so that's Listen, that. Man. Mello, I love you. you. Guys are haters. So when you come on our show, let's beat up Rios. <laughs> yeah, but yo, bro, that has been our show for today. It's your boy, Jay Bobby. It's your boy, Rios. And Jay Bobby and Rios ain't nothing to fuck with. Over time, you dig? Yeah. yeah. You like that, didn't you? For more scorching hot takes, for real slender hours and just that plain old good content. Come to J. Bobby and Rios. Like and subscribe.